This is Leave Your Mark. I'm Vince Cortez, and today's guest is Michael Kramer, a spirited 22-year-old who once danced with waves in Miami and soared with the wind as an Olympic hopeful, now carries the scars of an unimaginable journey. On July 14, 2020, he's diagnosed with a rare form of T-cell lymphoma, a cancer so rare that less than 200 cases have ever been documented. Against all odds and through the crucible of chemo, radiation, and bone marrow transplant, Michael's resilient spirit has defied an eight-month survival expectation, illuminating the shadows of his struggle with a miraculous light of hope three years later. Michael, thank you for being my guest here today. Thank you so much for having me. Hi there, and welcome. Yeah. Now it's time for America's favorite podcast. Leave your mark with your host, Vince Cortez. If it's fly, loose fit it. It's Cortez. If freeze and chubbies in it, it's Cortez. Leave your mark. It's about inspiring the world. One guess at a time. Pass the word from Brooklyn to Pittsburgh, from urban to suburb. It's Cortez, you heard? And here is our host, Vince Cortez. This is, my man, you have gone through the ringer. This is like what is going on in your life and and how you've been able to stand tall here and to, to be given an eight-month diagnosis and to be here three years later. I'm excited to share with everyone what it is you're doing that's beating this situation back. So I'll touch on that a little later. We got mom Ashley over there. And Michael, you guys have a podcast, but I, I want to touch on your upbringing and how life was like when you were a little guy. So you're born in Paris, France, and yeah. you're raised in Miami, Florida. Those are two spectacular cities. So I'm sure that you got quite experience in your youth going there. Now, your mom, Ashley, she was a professional dancer and a child educator. Your dad, Patrice, uh, he's a sound engineer now, and he's recently passed. So we're going to touch on that a little bit as well. So what was life like with your siblings, Stephen and Jennifer, growing up? Life was good. I mean, we had a great family. We were always together. We were always active. We were in school. We studied hard. We played hard. We also loved going to the beach. My brother and I, we were windsurfers on the Olympic development team together, actually. My sister was a dancer, and she still is a dancer. She's going to be a professional dancer, actually. And life growing up with my family, with my brother and sister, was great. We had a great relationship. My brother and I were super close. My sister and I, we we always, like, joked around with each other. And I kind of, not I wouldn't say bullied her. It's the wrong word. Just, like, messed with her. You know, I was an older brother. And we have a good relationship. We still do. And I'm just so lucky to have a, such a good brother and sister and grew up with such amazing parents as well. Now, you go into Miami Beach High School and your interests are electric guitar and obviously the windsurfing. And then you're finished with high school and you're off to Eckerd College. And college doesn't last very long. Share with me what happens after graduation yeah so after i graduated high school i went away to college and came back during covid and when covid happened i started to feel really tired and for a few months it kind of just like dragged on and then i realized like something was really wrong because i was tired for so long uh it was around march of 2020 i had night sweats i developed some fevers and i was not feeling like myself at all and we went and did some blood work with a family of pediatrician of ours that we've known forever. And she realized that something was off with the blood work. So she sent me to a specialist at Nicholas Children's Hospital and he did some blood work of his own and then asked us to come in the next day. I was with my mom. We were together. And then he diagnosed me with leukemia slash lymphoma after doing a bone marrow biopsy because the blood work was just so off. And now this was July now you're uh mentioning covid so the idea then that did you have covid also prior I to this I, had COVID. I thought i had covid but no i did not have covid you didn't have covid okay so then yours then was one where you were experiencing fatigue 
instead of just being sick. Share mm-hmm. with me with share with me what fatigue feels like. Fatigue was like really fatigue. Like I was exhausted. I could barely get up to go to the gym. I was sleeping more. I just did not feel like myself at all. You know, I felt horrible. I had no appetite. And I was just exhausted all the time. Now you get you get this fatigue and then you get the diagnosis. So what is your first thought when you're told you have this rare uh T cell lymphoma? Uh what what's your initial thought that you find out you have cancer? So when I first found out I had cancer, they didn't know my official diagnosis. They just said it was leukemia or lymphoma. And then three weeks later, we got the official diagnosis. And when I was diagnosed first, I wasn't that scared because I didn't know exactly what it was. The treatment could have been short. It could have been long. It could have been an easy treatment. But when I was initially, but when I was like diagnosed officially, that's when something kind of got a little more scared to me because I realized I had to go through chemotherapy radiation and a bone marrow transplant which is what they told me and I was pretty nervous for the transplant and the radiation but I just realized that it was something I had to go through and that I could get through it how did you feel emotionally um as far as you know they're giving you the diagnosis and then their recommendations with the treatments where were you emotionally with that other than being scared like I need to do this right away or How did you take on the emotional state of that? I just felt like I had no choice but to just go through it. And I felt like the treatment started pretty quickly. So I knew what I was getting into. I knew that hopefully it would be quick. Hopefully that it would only be a few months of chemo, then the transplant, and then I'd be done. Because in the beginning, I didn't think I was going to end up with a chronic disease like I have now. So I thought the treatment was going to be short. It was just going to be a chemo and then the transplant. And then I'll go back to my normal life. Just like a regular cold, be done with it. Um, yeah. Now, these situations require you to understand what's going on with your conditions. So how do you then begin to learn now that you have an official diagnosis, treatments have begun, what do you begin to learn or where's your mind? What are you telling yourself as you're beginning to go through the process? So when I was first going through the process, I was just like, this is pretty hard, but you know, this is, I can get through it because I felt okay. I never felt horrific when I was going through chemo. I felt bad, but I was always, I felt like I was always okay enough to get through it. And it was really hard, but every day there were like some small good moments. And even though chemo sucked, that's its great support and knew that I could get through it. So I want you to share with me then some of the things that you've gone through in the treatment. You've had a bone marrow transplant and GVHD liver failure as well. So share with me the bone marrow transplant part first. So I had my bone marrow transplant October 27th of 2020. And I was just you know, I was really nervous for it because I had to get radiation before. And that was something that was really scary to me because I never did radiation before. And the transplant, basically what it was, was they gave me chemo and radiation to like destroy my white blood cells so that they would go down to zero. And then they would infuse me with the donor stem cells that would like become mine. And that's really the whole process. And after I got the infusion of those stem cells, then they put me on immunosuppressants to like calm down the immune system so that the immune system wouldn't go crazy and like attack me but it ended up doing that anyways but the transplant was a long process we were there for six weeks in the hospital it was very difficult the chemo and radiation was the most intense i've ever received it was so hard a lot of pain yeah a lot of pain for sure have you ever thought about writing a book well neither did i My life-changing experience with cancer moved me to share my story. Bad days are really good days in disguise. You can get it on Amazon. Click the link in the description below. Now, back to Michael. Right now, it's just, I'm doing treatment. I take immunosuppressants. I do a treatment called ECP. And one of the biggest things I deal with is like a fatigue from the, I can't get sun. And because I was on so many different treatments for graft versus host disease, I developed necrosis, which is part part of, you know, the steroid use that I was on for so long because steroids are a big part of treatment with 
graft versus host disease and steroids really destroy your bones and joints. Oh yeah, they do. Now, did you mention the steroids? Let's talk about the side effect of the steroids. And the one most obvious is the physical appearance. And you touch on this on some of the, your Instagram posts. Uh, what was it like when you went from this handsome young man, surfer, nice physique, tan, and it's all just disappeared? Yeah, it was definitely hard. It was not easy to look at myself in the mirror. I was unrecognizable at times, and it was really depressing to see that. I just had to remember that deep down inside, I was still there, and it wasn't someone else, you know? Do you think that this allows you to see a deeper side of yourself? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So it's extremely humbling as well, because it's like it's what we think we are, we're not. And yeah. that moment of truth can be telling. So, I mean, you seem to have handled this very well. Uh, how how did you come out of it? I mean, because your body's just continually going to change here until you're you're through the process. Yeah, it was it was really hard. I mean, could, sorry, could you repeat that question again? It's like you you're uh, going through the process of having lost your identity and you're coming through the other side share with me where like your head is now like mentally where do your thoughts go while you're doing your treatment or or what's the next treatment for you is yeah i mean it's it's definitely hard right now i'm just trying to look at myself because i don't look the same as i did before and i'm just trying to tell myself okay like this is a new this is a new me you know i've been through chemo radiation a bone marrow transplant. Now I have chronic graft versus host disease. And I just have to understand that I'm not the same as before. And I will never be the same as before, but I'm still who I am. I'm still Michael and I'm a deeper and better person, I believe. I I, I would agree with that full heartedly. Now, your frame of mind moving forward is, is do you have a time in your mind where you believe you're going to be 100% healed? No, there will there will never be a time when I'm 100 percent healed. I don't mean to be negative, but it's it's probably not going to happen. Okay, you get to believe. The belief is what triggers the healing. For those of you interested in starting a podcast on YouTube, I've created a free mini course. It's just nine minutes long. It provides insights for you to start your podcast journey. Now back to the episode and with lymphoma how long were you married before your husband passed well we were married 19 years when he passed away uh we'd been together 24 years so and three a long children time. a long time yeah the kids were when he was diagnosed they were 10 12 and 14 michael was the middle one my daughter was 10 michael was 12 my other son Stephen, was 14 and when he passed away, they were 12, 14, and 16. Michael, a week later, turned 15. So it was definitely, you know, it was a hard... hard now, time. when you go through losing your mate, and it's extremely hard, and now you have these three children, and you guys sound like a very close-knit family. Yeah. So, I mean, just recently getting over that enormous loss, you find out about Michael. So... What's going on in your head when you're hearing is for round two, so to speak? Yeah, and it's not like you get over when someone passes away, but you, 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 you change your life and you live with it. And there's always the grief within you, but there's also joy. And I had so much joy, of course, with my three children. And I always try to think, you know, I had that time with my husband and that it's not just that he died. It's that he also he lived. But when Michael, like, like he said, when Michael was first feeling sick, like I, cancer never came into my head. We really, there was a point I was like, maybe it's COVID. It was at the time it was the beginning of COVID and everyone's symptoms were different. We weren't sure. So when he went in for the blood test, even when he went in for the blood test, I wasn't thinking cancer. Did the bone marrow biopsy. I was like, they're going to tell me he's anemic. He's going to need certain vitamins. Maybe we're going to have to change his diet a little bit. Maybe he needs more protein. I'm a vegetarian, a vegan, who knows? And when the doctor walked in and he was so kind, 
you know, it was a time of masks. And I remember what I, I will never forget when he walked in, Dr. Diangulo, and I could see his eyes. Like when we first met him, he had this mask and he had these sparkly eyes. When he walked in after the biopsy, those eyes, they were not sparkling. And he when he told us that Michael had some form of blood, blood cancer, they weren't sure what. I think like he said leukemia or lymphoma. When he said lymphoma, I feel like my world, just like everything stopped. Uh, I don't even know what the next words were out of his mouth because all I could think of was, oh my God, how could my son have lymphoma after losing my husband? And, but then, you know, as we know, you've been through cancer, you've been through miracles, you've been through magic, and now you're also on the caregiver side. So there's something that kicks in and you just, you're just like, okay, I will do anything for this person that I love. And, you know, the blessing with having been through it with my husband was that I think it, I don't want to say it motivated us more, but in a way we were like, okay, we have, we've got to get through this for Patrice. I learned so much from what we went through with him. And I'm like, maybe those were our blessings. You know, you never know why things happen. We don't know the reason, but it just felt like he gave us the strength and so much motivation to get through this with Michael. And when we found out that Michael needed a bone marrow transplant, my husband as well. So my husband had cancer. He was in remission and then he relapsed. And when he relapsed, they were hoping to do a bone marrow transplant on my husband. Mm -hmm. but it's never healthy enough. You have to have a certain amount of health for them to knock you down to give you the transplant. <laughs> yeah, right? Isn't it's, that it's, the truth? Isn't, yeah. So he was never well enough to do the transplant. So when we found out Michael needed a transplant, I think we were just like, okay, we've got to get there. And when he got there, we were like, this is the miracle that we needed for my husband and it's happening for Michael. So I think it gave us a lot of motivation, perspective. And also it really did, like, I never thought my husband was going to die. You know, yeah. I never thought. That. And so with Michael, so I'm not saying that I thought Michael was going to die, but it gave us the perspective that maybe there's a possibility he might not make it. So we better live every day. Mm. You no. Know? And I think that it, it's been like double perspective. I hear that from so many cancer survivors, people going through cancer, that it gives you this great perspective. But I felt like we had like this double dose because we just. Oh, yeah. It. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now. I'm going to ask you real quick, and that, that leads me into, I want to talk about what the two of you are currently doing online and how you're bringing attention to uh, patients and caregivers on a storyline uh, level, which is just nobody's really doing this at all. So at this point, actually, what is the most important thing you've learned in your life? Oh, goodness. Do you have another hour? <laughs> uh, whose idea was that? It was our idea together. I mean, I think yeah. that I kind of brought the idea to my mom because my friend did a podcast. My friend started a podcast and we decided that we should do one together because we could bring so much awareness and give people deeper insights to what we were going through because we were just posting on Instagram really and TikTok. And we thought that we could give someone like a longer version of like a 15 to 30 minute, you know, kind of discussion of what we're really going through and our messages. It's your, your, your message is very powerful and your courage is through the roof. I mean, you're, you're an incredible inspiration. That's why we wanted to have you on here. So um, you're on. Share with me. What is your social medias that we can find you on? Yeah. So the Instagram is Michael Reed Kramer, M-I-C-H-A-L-R-E-I-D-C-R-A-M-E-R, -E -E Michael Reed Kramer. And Ashley Kramer, Ashley with two E's, and our podcast is Michael and Mom Talk Cancer, and our website is michaelandmomtalkcancer.com, and our YouTube is Michael and Mom Inspire, so those are our, our things. Yeah, you you can, can tell, you, he's seasoned, he's a singing podcaster, how he got that all out, just like on yeah. TV. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know I was going to oh, ask him. Oh, yeah, oh. exactly. But, but I do, it leads me to my final question, how would you like to leave your mark, Michael? Yeah, I would like to leave my mark just knowing that what we're doing is helping people and that we're changing people's lives and giving them hope. That's really, that's the biggest thing that we want to do is just leave our mark by making the world a better place. As corny as it sounds, it's what we're here to do. On the other side of this, it doesn't sound corny at all. 
<laughs> helping you, you, others the best way to help yourself helping right. others. Yeah. you guys are great i want to thank you for being on here this was wonderful getting to talk to you and get to share your story i want you to keep the fight alive thank we're you. all watching you we're all thank on your you side so you too you're amazing thank you so thank much thank you you just left your mark. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Listen to more episodes on demand. Just click leave your mark with Vince Cortez. If you enjoyed that episode, click on the link next to my image. You're going to love this one.